Hey guys, in this video, I'm going to take you along with me while I sort bank feeds in QuickBooks Online. So I feel like as a bookkeeper, a lot of times I'm just going along doing my process and I'm kind of curious what other bookkeepers do or like how they do it or in what order. So I thought you guys might like to see that as well. Let me know in the comments kind of what your process is. Do you think there's anything I should be doing more efficiently? Do you do it similar to how I do it or do you have kind of a different system? And I do have an older video, the thumbnail looks like this, all about kind of like the basics of bank bank feeds, what they are, kind of how to get the information. So you can check out that video if you want more of like an overview, but this is more like a work with me video. So I am going to pop over to my computer screen and I'll come back here to this screen to let you know a couple of things like what are some of the problems that can make like duplicate things in bank feeds, as well as what to do if you need to categorize income into different like streams of income within QuickBooks. All right, so here I am in the sample company today. You go to banking and this is the bank feeds area. You can see all the different accounts in the sample company. They have a checking, a savings, and a credit card. Um, so what I do personally, so I'm gonna start with the checking and I go to all of the recognized transactions first because of course QuickBooks is making a bunch of rules all the time. They're suggesting a lot of rules I have already approved. So, you know, every time we get a water bill, I know it goes to utilities, stuff like that. So I think it saves time if I go to the recognized transactions first. And I think most of these are usually correct. Um, this is bothering me how it's not compact. I, I can't figure out where to change it, but mine is always compact. So it's just one line per, um, per, you know, it's not, so thick. Um, but anyways, I think copy bank detail to memo is really helpful because the bank details often have a lot of information in there. Um, and it looks kind of weird, but sometimes you can get a lot of clues from that. So I think that's a great thing. I thought that was automatically, automatically set to being on, but it's not in this one. And on this one, I am going to show bank details because that is usually what I sort by usually in the next step. But this one hopefully should go fast because hopefully QuickBooks is doing its job and all these are mostly correct. So what I do is I click all of them to start and then I'll just unclick any that are incorrect that I can see. And usually out of like maybe a hundred or more transactions, that's only like two or three usually. And if you guys don't know me, my name is Morgan from finepoints.biz. I love to help you guys out with your bookkeeping businesses. Definitely check out my free masterclass and checklist as well as subscribe if you think this would be helpful to you. And a thumbs up is always a huge compliment for me. So sometimes it has a problem with checks I have found. And then, like I said, I like to sort by the bank description. In the sample company, we're not getting very good descriptions. So then I just go through all of these. I'm like, okay, that one looks right. All these look correct. Then maybe I come across one, maybe it's like a tax payment and it thinks it went to one tax, you know, bracket, but actually it should have been an owner's draw because it was their quarterly taxes. That just happened to me. The IRS was, you know, some vendors can be in different categories. Um, it is not always the case, but you know, if you're buying from Amazon, maybe you could buy like, you know, office furniture as well as office supplies, as well as maybe staff gifts stuff like that. So sometimes QuickBooks is not perfect at categorizing everything. So maybe there's two of these that I think are not correct and the rest of them I can accept. Okay, so these are the two that are now not in QuickBooks. I'm gonna take off this recognized um, filter, I guess you'd call it, and then it's gonna show me everything. So this is all transactions and maybe these ones need a little bit more information. Again, I like sorting by the bank detail just because that groups things together. So it groups, you know, all these books by Bessie are together and I can be like, okay, that's correct. So then I can add this one and then maybe there's a problem. This one says two matches found. And what I come across the most with this is if there's like checks, maybe you wrote like three $50 checks and QuickBooks maybe had a hard time figuring out which check went to which um, check entry that you had made. And so you, you see it can give you the two options I'm trying to figure out if I can tell from this, but, um, oh yeah. So you can see it's the bill payment books by Bessie. So this is probably the correct one. So then I will match this and then hopefully the other one will be fixed because one of the problem areas was taken away. And then of course, when you have something that maybe QuickBooks have never seen before, like a new vendor, um, you might need to create a vendor. So then you can add that and then save the vendor. And then this was income, so it was a refund. Let's see if there's one 
that is for refunds i think that should be fine so then i've set up like this new vendor and put it all in there correctly and then oftentimes quickbooks will ask you if you want to create a rule i don't know if it does it automatically in the sample company um but one tip that i personally do not use automatic rules so let's look at this so it says under here you can create a rule and then so you would call it um hicks maybe all right so it comes from hicks hardware let's put it under supplies maybe um so every time we get one from this vendor it's going to categorize it as supplies and then um, I do want to keep the existing bank memo personally. And then I do not like to, this is what I was talking about. I do not like to auto add the rules. So that means you don't even see it in the bank feeds. It just automatically goes straight into QuickBooks. And so I like to see what QuickBooks is doing. I don't 100% trust all of their categorization to be perfect. And yes, there's probably a couple, there's probably like a handful of vendors that it would be fine if I auto add that it's very, very accurate. But personally, I don't really use this except for in a couple cases. So let me know in the comments if you guys are doing more of the auto ad or if you like to see all of them or not. So this creates a rule. So next time we see that vendor, it is going to populate correctly and it's going to remember it. And just a quick note, if you have categorized all your transactions and you have an app connected to QuickBooks. So I have a video all about this. I use Amazon Business and I connect it to my QuickBooks. So every Amazon purchase feeds into QuickBooks. So it has a really good description then. Otherwise your client can be buying tons of stuff on Amazon all the time and you won't know what it is. So I have a video, the thumbnail looks like this if you wanna check out how to do that process. But basically now is the time you do that. After you put all the stuff in, categorize everything, but before you reconcile, you want to um, open that other tab, the apps tab, and then um, match those transactions. All right, so let's say all the rest of these look good, and then you're done with this account. When you finish all your accounts, or however you want to do it, um, you can reconcile. So I go to bank register and then reconcile, and then you just need to go onto the bank website and get the statement. Sometimes they will import them into QuickBooks, put the ending balance and the date, and then that start reconciling. Okay, I was trying to think of some examples of when QuickBooks might mess up or when there might be like duplicate transactions that get into QuickBooks. Because someone uh, wrote to me and they asked me a question about bank feeds. They're like, they wanted to see like this video. They phrased it like, how do I check each transaction to make sure it's not already in the bank account? And I don't really, I was struggling with how to answer this because I think once you do it, you'll just kind of catch on. But basically, I'm not checking every transaction that is not in the bank account. But how do I know if something is duplicated? Well, first of all, you're definitely going to find it when you reconcile. But hopefully you can maybe catch it before that so you don't even put it into QuickBooks. I would say the biggest clue that I get is that I am doing something kind of funky. So maybe there was like a transaction I was trying to split or I deleted something because it was void or something weird was happening, then it causes the wrong thing to be waiting for you in the bank feeds. One example that hopefully will be the most clear to you is this. So my client gave a handwritten check to a employee and when the employee cashed it at the bank, the bank misread it. So it was $1,000 different than what the check should have been. So then of course QuickBooks did not match it because usually I put the check in QuickBooks and then when the person cashes it, QuickBooks knows those are the same checks and it matches. But in theory, what could have happened in this case was the check could have been cashed through the bank feeds. So say the check was supposed to be $4,000, but the bank actually read it as $3,000. So essentially that was kind of in QuickBooks twice at that point, because once was the correct check amount. And then the second one was the, was the incorrect number that was came in from bank feeds and they're not attached together at this point. So I think the point that when I'm able to catch that is in the bank feeds, because there's going to be a transaction in there that's just hanging out that I can see as a check, but it doesn't have a match. I don't know what the check is. So at that point, it's my job to do some investigation. So I think I had to log into the bank to look at an image of the check, 
figure out what went wrong. And in that case, it was a little more complicated because they actually had to contact the bank, tell them they owed us money, owed us that thousand dollars, and then eventually that was reimbursed. So I guess kind of my point is, yes, it seems like so straightforward when it's a really simple business. Like every single transaction, some when I spend money with my debit card, it feeds into the bank feeds. The next day I spend a different amount, it feeds into the bank feeds. I get one check, it feeds. Like it should be very linear and very easy. Um, but just as businesses get more complex, there's just more moving parts, more things that can go wrong. Maybe you're doing invoicing. That can be a little tricky to make sure you match the payment with the invoice, like match the right amount that the customer owes you. So I think it's really great if you're just starting out just to start with simple businesses, I have a video the thumbnail looks like this about the 30 best businesses to start out with as a bookkeeper because they're a little bit more simple. So hopefully you're going along, you're learning your client's business, you don't have any problems for a month or two, and then maybe you have one problem, and then maybe you have two problems. So little by little, you're gonna figure out how to deal with these little things you might need to tweak within the bank feeds. Just a quick tip, I do often categorize income into different buckets. It depends on your client and what they prefer and how complex their business is. So if you wanna do that, you'll need some kind of system where they can communicate to you uh, where the money's coming from. So it might be clear if it's like certain vendors go to certain in certain buckets in QuickBooks, or maybe it's your invoicing clients and you can tell that way. For me, we kind of use like an outside like spreadsheet thing so they can tell me this is where to categorize these deposits. So sometimes if I just want to get everything in QuickBooks to start pulling reports and I don't have time to categorize that income right at that minute, I will just put it in one bucket called like uncategorized income, or you can really make it up anything you want. So that is a tip for categorizing. If you need to come back to things, you can use the Ask My Accountant bucket or you can create your own bucket. Sometimes I'll like have questions about certain checks. So I'll be like, this is a little category that I made that I know I need to check those checks. So let me know in the comments if that's helpful and if you do something similar. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I really appreciate you staying till the end. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up if you liked it. All right, I will talk to you next week. Take care.